to Wake Up Wednesdays. <laughs> Here we have joining us today with me, myself, Nathan Caldwell, Gavin Fox, Nicholas Caldwell, and Aaron Beck. We thank you all for all the love and support that you all have been giving us. Um, it's been a blessing. It's been an honor. Uh, we enjoy, we absolutely enjoy, love doing this with uh, uh, our uh, brothers. And uh, we just appreciate everything that you guys have been the feedback, everything, the love. We, we love it. We enjoy it. So, enjoy. And as he said, we just want to thank you guys for, for watching, sticking with us. Um, we want to remind you to, to, like, <laughs> to like the video. It uh, should be in the ballpark of here. Click that button right there. Subscribe button should be somewhere in the ballpark of here. Uh, turn that little bell notification uh, icon on so that way if you... Um, forget about it coming out on Wednesday. We uh, it'll, it'll give you a notification, pop up on your phone that you know we have a video live. We try to go live every Wednesday at 4:30 uh, a.m. And uh, like I said, you know we just appreciate all you guys listening and um, and joining us. And, and the best way that we can continue to uh, to spread God's word is by you guys uh, liking these uh, videos, uh, by subscribing to the channel, and by by sharing this content out. Uh, via your social media platforms, uh, whether that be just sharing it to, to a friend via text message or or grabbing the link and putting it on, on your Facebooks or Instagrams or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we just uh, we just appreciate all the, all the love and support. I also want to plug um, Sukkot Kimes Church. Um, they've been very generous in allowing us to, uh, to use their facilities, um, to use uh, th their equipment to, to help uh, record, and we want to plug them um, or to give them a nod to that. That way we can always be sending you to an actual physical location to where you can be getting fed. I believe Nick's or Nate is going to have more on that, and so I'll, I'll send it over to them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we just wanted to uh, um, give thanks to Scott Kime, uh, like Aaron was talking about, and that um, the teachings that, the stuff that we're going over, the stuff that we're talking about today, um, has been passed down through um, who we sit under. Our teacher not only is uh, here in Locust Grove, but um, he's me and Nick's uh, dad. And it just, it are, the teachings that we've been under have just inspired us to do what we're doing today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's it's been an honor to be under uh, Brian Drywater and um, Jimmy Drywater, mommy. But it's just uh, we we would just love for anybody that we we have services on Sunday, huh? I lied. We have, <laughs> <laughs> we have services on Saturday. <laughs> I got coffee. Leave it in. <laughs> I got coffee. Man, man, I was on a roll. <laughs> Welcome back. No. <laughs> You're leaving all this in, all right? <sighs> Every bit of it. Uh, okay. 10, 10, really 10 a.m. on Saturday. And um, it's great teaching. We'd love for anybody and everybody that can join us uh, on Saturdays. So, um, really, all I got. All right. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that intro. Saturdays. Saturdays, not Sundays. Saturdays. Hey, I, uh, before we get into today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Passover, and I told the guys that I wanted to absolutely unload everything that we had on Passover. I know last week we kind of introduced uh, uh, the idea of Passover. We kind of went over, uh, you know, just general tidbits, kind of gave it a, a good gloss over, but, you know, today I want to be glossing over, or going in-depth to, to Passover, the differences between um, uh, what we why you know when the church celebrates Easter compared to Passover and um, you know when to do these on the appointed times but before we get into this I want to say on the record that I am an Oklahoma fan okay for sure I, I, I yeah sooner I feel like we didn't cover that <laughs> last week right uh, we, we talked about this off camera and there was like a there was some doubt right there was a little bit of doubt that I might not be a sooner fan I say we scored we're this, we're that. I mean, I'm a bona fide Sooner fan, so I just Amen, want, brother. I want, I want on the record that I am, a, <laughs> I am saved, right? Yeah. I am redeemed. I am a Sooner fan. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think the 
those can tie together. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did, I did want to settle another debate, though. So I've been getting feedback that I am saying the name of our podcast wrong, okay, which is fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm known to do these things. My head, the channel, is called Wake Up Wednesday. This is for my wife, Dan Lenz. The channel is called Wake Up Wednesday, right? Mm-hmm. In this, in the entity of Wake Up Wednesday, we have a podcast. And so when I come on the air and I'm say, welcome to this week's episode of the Wake Up Wednesdays podcast. It's not plural Wednesdays. It's a it's possessive. possessive. Yeah. It's a possessive uh, pronoun as in this is Wake Up Wednesdays podcast. So like showing ownership of the episode. Of the episode. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Because if I just said... Welcome to Wake Up Wednesday podcast. Sounds stupid, right? And so that's why... It's the channel's episode. It's the channel's episode, right? Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay, so today I want to be talking about uh, Passover. I want to go... I uh, want to dive deep into it. I did some research, you guys. A mm-hmm. uh, little, bit, little bit of research on... Um, I guess we can just dive into it. Numbers 2 is where I found this out. If y'all want to go to that. Numbers. Numbers 2. Numbers chapter 2. What was Numbers? What is the, yeah, I was going to say, what is the uh, Hebrew word for Numbers? Bemidbar. Bemidbar, yeah. Bemidbar. Bemidbar? Yeah. Okay. Numbers 2. And this is kind of how my brain works. And this is kind of, this is talking specifically in regards to uh, when to celebrate the Passover. Numbers 2. Let me know when everybody's there. You don't have to be there. Number two, what? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm 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 completely wrong. Numbers nine, verse oh two. Oh my heavens! So you wasn't where I thought. That was my fault. No. My fault. You don't have to be there. Anyway, I'm just gonna read it. So, like I said, this is kind of how my brain works. But I was like, I was trying to find the time uh, when Passover is celebrated. Like, is this something that uh, that we celebrate at a specific time every year? And so Numbers 9, verse 2 says, Let the people of Israel keep the Passover at its appointed time. And immediately my head strikes out and I underline time. What appointed time? So what is the appointed time? We'll go to the next verse. Right? It says, On the 14th day of this month, um, approximately April, uh, you know, every year, approximately April, 14th day of this month. But what month? In my head, this is how it works. So the month of Abib. So mm-hmm. my translation, uh, the English Standard Version, says the month of Abib. And you can find this in Exodus 13, verse 4. And this is what I said generally around April. So the month of Abib happens generally around April. But where do we get that word Abib from? So the Hebrew, and it's spelt A-V-I-V. Aviv. 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 Aviv, right? And I guess in some, I guess in uh, when they would translate that to Greek or or whatever, or where they would would get it from from something, they would it, it, it pronounced a bib, um, but it actually means the ears of barley. And to dive in a little bit further, <laughs> to dive in a little bit further, this was they called this month of a bib before the Babylonian captivity, mm-hmm. which took place in. AD... 70? Okay. No, 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 no. That was the destruction of the second temple. I have no idea. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> pre, this was, this was <laughs> pre-Babylonian cap- t- captivity of when they called this the month of Aviv, um, which, is, which is why we see it in, in most uh, translations of, of the Bible. But nowadays, post-Babylonian captivity, it is now called... Nisan. Nisan. Good job. Yep. So I was pretty, I was pretty proud of myself. And uh, in that research, um, for for finalizing the, uh, the like the the, the month, um, so to speak, of, of when this actually takes place. Yeah. One thing I will say that's kind of interesting about this podcast that, that I found. I'm, I know I'm going off on, on, no, on a little good. bit of a rant, here, but uh, man, I, like I've been so enriched uh, by the Word of God, and I I, I would always have you know kind of found myself as like a little bit of a Bible nerd. Like honestly, like I I love God's Word. I love reading about it. Um, I'm not saying I'm an expert by by any means about about the Bible, but I really love diving into it. And just even since um, us diving into the Torah, specifically the Torah portion of 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 the Bible, like I'm like, 
it's been so enriching just to my personal life. And I'm learning so much about his word and it's got me like, I mean, really diving deep into like the little nooks and the crannies of, of like his word and what it means and like each little each little each little thing of, of, of why it is that he gives us these words. But yeah. man, I just I, I just thought that was that was that was kind of cool how like I let the word of God in in two verses going over to three, but like in two verses it just revealed so much yeah much to me and I thought that was that was so kind of cool. And so, that's just the start of it, man. Yeah, like, absolutely. The more you start diving into it you're going to be he's going to take you deeper right yeah i mean it's literally you're drinking from the well yeah. right now you know and yeah. it's just it's cool that he's revealing stuff to you like that yeah we've all been there right? i'm sure at the start of discovering torah we were just getting just flooded with knowledge right mm-hmm. but can't get too caught up in that right you just got to you know, let the Lord lead you in, yeah. in those areas. One thing, another thing that I think is cool, and like I said, like I'm going off on tangents here before, <clears throat> we get, before we really get started, but like ever since like we've started talking about Torah, um, like I'll go back and read sections of the New Testament. Like, like Gavin's always pointing to is that, you know, Paul and most New Testament writers or the second writings, like they're always referencing the Torah and the law and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And like, I didn't realize that at the time, and t- but like, it's there. Yeah. You go back and read it and it's clearly there. Like they're always referencing that. They're yeah. always referencing it's all they it. Had. Yeah. Yeah. That's all they had to go by. I mean, there was nothing, there was a, no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and mm-hmm. John there. Yeah. <laughs> it was the Torah yeah. that they yeah. had to read. Yeah. yeah. But I just, I mean, I just, I think that's, it's, so whether we, uh, whether we ever, you know, grow to 40 million people like I want to, like, just us four sitting in this room has, has strengthened me, you know, as a, as a person. So yeah, so getting into it uh, today, uh, Nick, I'll kind of let you take the reins of um, kind of kind of where we want to go, and I'll kind of just kind of you know I'll put the ball on the tee for you and just kind of say let it rip. What happened this week was when we were studying for this, and Gavin and I was kind of talking back and forth. Um, I wanted to be, I felt the need to really just, Lord, what do you want me to say? You know, I mean, I know we're just four guys just sitting here talking, but, you know, I want I want to be led throughout my day. You know, I want to be led. And, um, you know, I, I had watched The Passion um, a couple weeks ago. And... What really blessed me was seeing, although it is a a Catholic movie, you know, I I I enjoyed the part where it showed the Last Supper, the Passover. Yeah. And um, you know, it he said, you know, drink, you know, this is my blood, eat, this is my body, you know, and Knowing that Passover was coming up, it was, um, I felt invigorated, you know. So, I mean, I'm excited about doing this episode. I'm excited about what the Lord put on my heart. And, and I'm sitting here just thinking, like, everything is working out differently than what my mind may have pictured. But as it's working out, I'm seeing the Lord working these things out. Yeah. And,. If you, when you partake of Passover, before you you might be going through some things, and during Passover you might be going through some things. Then after Passover you're like, man, that was just the festival of Passover. You're just yeah. like, man, that was so fun, you yeah. know. And I'm not gonna say any names, um, but last year we had a family member went missing, you know, a few weeks before Passover. And um, it was wild. It was wild. I, I've been working in the Tulsa area, and I went up to the casino up there in the Hard Rock, and I, was, I took a picture up there. I was like, look, if you guys see this person, you know, here's my number. Yeah, yeah, you know, they, they were extremely helpful, you know. And, uh, but Passover, our Passover service that, or, you know, when we had Passover service here, our Seder, um, 
mom walked up to Pastor Jimmy Drywater walked up to me and she said, I think we're going to hear something from so-and-so tonight, you know? And it was like, all right, you know? Then it was a few minutes later, literally, it was crazy. It was yeah. crazy because and that's the kind of stuff, you know, like those things were burdening, burdening us, you know, worry and, and stuff. And, but it was, it was just, it was just neat. But with Passover, you know, we see, um, we see that there was uh, a sacrificial lamb. Um, and we, we know that the Lord instituted that for, um, <clears throat> to show the Israelites that, you know, what he brought them out of. Mm-hmm. And there's things in my life, there's been past um, addictions, past whatever, you know, sin or whatever, uh, a different way of li- of living. And the Lord brought me out of that. You know, he, he separated me from that to bring me closer to him. And um, so Passover has been a big deal for me. But as I was studying this week, I was going through some Jewish historians, and you know, one of them said that Passover at the time of Yeshua was a major event, bigger than the Super Bowl, the World Series, and the Fourth of July combined. Wow! You know, which is you know, it's well, huge. those are big events yeah. in our yeah. Yeah. secular world. Yeah, especially and especially in our culture, like yeah. those are. I mean, everybody, I mean, if it's even, you know, we're talking, uh, what do you call it, water cooler talk, like, mm-hmm. oh, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? So, yeah, that's kind of that's interesting that, that, that there was so much uh, reverence for for Christ and uh, and for Passover at that time that, that was, it was bigger than that. That's, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is a celebratory time. Yeah, you know, this is a, a time where we rejoice at what the what we've what the Lord has brought us out of. Mm-hmm. You know, because we've all been, you know, we've all come short. You know, yeah, when, absolutely. So I mean, it it's it's nothing nobody else has been through. You know, of course, we may not have done some other things that others have done, but we've we've all had our battles and our troubles, and um, so. When we come from those things, you know, we're returning to, to the Lord, and, and in Passover, I feel, I feel like I've always gotten a little closer to the Lord, you yeah. know, and it and it's time for, for family, you know, and we get to spend a lot of time with the family, um, get to see some people I haven't seen in a while, so that's kind of my spiel for now. Yeah, so I I. Uh... I kind of remember you referencing last week. You know, Passover to you was was a time of celebration, and it, it, what what one thing that you really looked forward to was the time that you got to spend with family. But I think it's I think it's really neat that you were, and I've never even thought about that. Like Passover can mean something much more than just like the uh, you know the, the actual process of you know cooking the lamb and, and the eating and, and and partaking in the actual. Um, the ritual, for lack of a better word, of, of Passover. Like it's a, I mean, yeah, you brought it, brought up a good point. You know, God, uh, you know, He called me out of bondage necessarily. I was, you know, in bondage to sin, and I, I mean, I can take you to the to the right next to the tree that it was where I felt like, you know, like literally God struck me with like a lightning bolt and was like, hey, you know, today your life's like gonna change forever. And, and don't get me wrong, it wasn't it wasn't perfection all at once. Yeah, right. It wasn't like it happened overnight, but it was like a, I knew right then I was like, oh man, he, you know, there's definitely something that's being drawn out of me now. Like there, there's a there's a disdain for mm-hmm. uh, for sin and, and a yearning to learn more about Him. And man, it was that's that's so interesting that you, that you referenced that. Like, yeah, it was like you know, Passover then for a group of massive people like the Israelites can be something so intimate and so small as. You know, God drawing me personally out of out of bondage because I was, you know, I was a slave to a sinful life, a, a a life that was, you know, whether I was, you know, doing horrific things or not, that wasn't the point. My life was not in in honor of in honor of God, and that's yeah, it's just it's so cool that 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 you referenced it referenced it like that. Um, well, yeah, yeah, 
you know, I mean, but there's also, I mean, I'm trying to add to your point here. Yeah. There's, and, and during my research, see, I, I love historical things like Gettysburg and, you know, I love history. Um, so when I was researching some stuff about this, and then the Lord was taking me in a different direction than what I had, my intentions of going were. And when I was studying for this, it said that back in uh, Yeshua's time in Jerusalem, there was 25 to 35,000 people in Jerusalem. And when Passover came, that number would increase by 150,000. Good night. Now, just for context, Jerusalem's a fairly small. Well, Israel's fairly small. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's a, it's a fairly small. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a a, a, a county. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not very big if you look right. at it. Right. Yeah, but then like to imagine to imagine one hundred fifty thousand people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think Mays County has twenty thousand. 30,000 people in it. So just like imagine something like Mays County holding 150,000 people in it, all to celebrate one thing, mind you. Yeah, you know in, in one mind and one accord, you know, right. to celebrate that thing. And it said that so many people would come that people would camp out in the countryside, you know, just to be there at that time. Yeah. You know, so it's a, it is a very special celebration. It's yeah. a very personal celebration. And I say I say that about the history of Jerusalem, and not to say that we've replaced Jerusalem here at Sukkot Khan. That is not what I'm saying <laughs> at all. But when we do our seder here, we have people come from a lot of different places to celebrate. I think last year we had two young women from Egypt. Yeah, that yeah. were yeah, here in cool. Oklahoma and heard we were doing the Passover through someone, and yeah. you know came in and, England. Yeah, yeah, England. yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I mean, so. It's 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 cool that we get to celebrate this together with so many different cult, uh, not uh, cultures, really. Right. Well, I mean, uh, I was just reading well ago, and it says that when they all came out of Egypt, there was a mixed multitude that went up with them. And then later on, it says that there is one Torah for the native born and for the sojourner who sojourns among you, mm -hmm. right? And a sojourner is someone who's not native born, like yeah. a. Someone that's traveling with them, yeah, right? You yeah. know, it's just they're not originally Hebrew or Israelite by blood, but they're not native born. In in our culture, would be a Gentile, mm -hmm. yeah, that's been grafted in, verbiage, in, yeah, yeah, in our verbiage, colloquially. <laughs> <laughs> Did I use it right? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah, no, I think that's even that's even neat there that even all the way back. So like. Coming from from my background, uh, southern you know conventional Southern Baptist, you know there's not a lot of talk of really not not a lot of talk of of the law or or you know the first writings, um, the first five chapters of the Bible, um, but you know we, you know we we're always referencing you know it's you know God's love was our you know the word was presented to the Jew first and then the Gentile, but like we do see that even all the way back from the beginning of time necessarily. I mean obviously not. The very beginning, but even back when when the law was being spoken, though, like yeah, this was this for everybody. Was, this was a yeah, this was a celebration to be to be you know for anybody. You know, cause yeah. Really, if we think about it, like you know Abraham's life and his worship and the way that he followed God was considered to him as righteousness. But like right. he was technically not. I mean, he was the father. his father was a an idol maker, right? I mean, he he made idols out of wood and stone. Yeah, and. You know, whenever he was called to come out from among his family, right? Yet it's actually kind of interesting that he was in the Ur, right? It says he called him out of Ur. This is a little tidbit, right? <laughs> so it's not like this part of what Gavin with Gavin section. Gavin with Gavin. <laughs> so like if you study ancient Mesopotamia, Ur is right around in that time frame. It would have been right around the time Nimrod was building the, the Tower of Babel mm. in ancient Mesopotamia. So when he called him out of there... He was calling him out of Ur, the Kazdim, but in our verbiage, it would be calling him out of Babylon. It says, come out from amongst them, lest you be judged with her, right? Like we see in the book of Revelation, right? Mm. So, but um, he's coming over, right? And he says, uh, wherever your feet touch, this will be your land. And he comes up and he's walking around and everything. And he, he crosses, he's about to cross over the Jordan River. 
And when he crosses over, they call him, Abraham was called the first Hebrew. That's what Hebrew means is to cross over. That's awesome. Right? So when we accept Yeshua as our Lord and Savior, we pass over, we cross over from death, death unto to life. life. Yeah. We become Hebrew. That's amazing. But I do want to know you and Nate's perspective on this. Um, you know, Passover, as a symbol to the Jews or whatever, it says it was a liberation from enslavement in ancient Egypt. Resilience through adversity um, and going into uh, the time of uh, the betrayal and the crucifixion, we kind of see that with Yeshua. Mm -hmm. You know, the resilience through adversity. There was a task at hand that he was meant for. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane. Gethsemane, right? Gethsemane. That was always a word I never could say, <laughs> and I pride myself on being able to pronounce words. But uh, Gethsemane, when he's praying and he's saying, "Lord, if it can, you know, can this cup pass from me?" You know, but he does what the Lord has destined and willed for him, anyways. That was the resilience through adversity. Yeah. So it's just the same thing as them leaving Egypt. You know, there was some, and they, they went through, you know, 40 years in the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. That was, you know, but I mean, that was kind of, they did that to themselves in a way, but at the same time, it was resilience through adversity. You know, they had to get some things out of themselves before they could make that crossing over. And the, Yeshua had to take some things on you know, for us to get out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I heard something a while back. This is a it's completely speculation, and this is literally just to start the co a conversation. This has kind of something, what we're having to do with him. But on the Mount of Transfiguration, right? Like I said, I just wanted to talk about this because I've read it today. Mount of Transfiguration, right? I heard somebody say one time, I cannot even tell you who, who what it was or where I heard it, but like, I need y'all's help on the, on the reference of this, but I know... Moses went up on Mount Sinai. Hmm. This is when the tablets were being written, right? When the law was being established, correct? None of that none of that really is important, but Mount Sinai, right? And then you have, was it Elijah, who also had the same kind of, he went up on a mountain? Did he that happen? He went up on Mount Carmel and challenged the prophets of Baal and Ashtoreth. That, okay. So. Which is. Okay, Easter. so that. Oh, really? Well, Ashtoreth would be the fertility goddess. And Baal would be the sun god. So this is, so that's, I mean, that's, that's a whole other section that I didn't even know that we was going to get into, but that was like a, <laughs> this was one of, this was one of those times that, uh, if I'm, if I'm right, he was like, but we had almost an hour conversation. He was like, about this, he was so. like, a uh, kind of mocking the yeah. other gods in a way, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, so digressing. Um, so we have Moses that goes up on Mount Sinai. Yeah. Okay. And then we have <clears throat> Elijah that goes up on Mount Carmel. Okay. Carmel. Carmel. Can those two things be anywhere anywhere connected? I'll get to what I'm getting to. Anyway, so then we have the the Transfiguration, which happened on Mount what? None of that's the important. Mount of Transfiguration. No. <laughs> so <laughs> I heard I heard some guy say. Anyway, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily it would it would help. The, the thought experiment, but there was, I guess the idea was that when Jesus, James, and John went up, that what was ha what was happening, like I said, this is not, you can't really piece this all together, because obviously, but the idea was that when the transfiguration was actually taking place, that everything was happening at one single point in time, right? And that God was actually, <laughs> right? God was actually, okay, so, so, when Moses was up on Mount Sinai, hold on, Gavin, just hold back for a couple of seconds. Just listen. So when God was actually, or Yahweh was actually having a conversation with Moses, right in the tablets, was at the same time and place that he was with Elijah, Elijah on, Mount on Mount Carmel and was the same time and place that Yeshua was Yeshua being transfigured. Was, yeah. Right. Had anybody ever heard that? I have, had a, I have heard a teaching on that. Yeah. Like, 
So whenever Moses was on Mount Sinai and he says, Yahweh, show me your glory. And he says, I can't show you my glory, but I'll show you my, my hinder parts, my backside. Mm-hmm. I'll hide you in this cliff. I'll cover you. And when I pass by you, I'll remove my hand and you can see my backside, right? Mm-hmm. I heard that in, in this teaching that when he saw his backside, Moshe was shot forward in time, like time travel, right? It, it, it sounds crazy yeah but we don't understand the full magnitude of yahweh's power and his his glory right Right. he he literally upholds time he creates it yeah yeah in in the very instance that we are in right now so so to 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 i'll I'll let you get back to that so so on that so god is light first john first john's little writings first john second john third john yeah he tells us god is light right if we take it from a from a mathematics perspective. The speed of light yeah. is whatever. A, let's say a, a million times per second, right? That's mm. the speed of light. So if God is light, right? It takes light a certain amount of distance to travel from point A to point B, right? It takes that's a, that's a time, right? But if God is light, not the speed of light, but if He, he is transcends, light, He yeah, time and he light transcends right? time and light. So therefore, the theory. That he was at that single place in time is actually a possibility. Exactly. Exactly. Because what did Yeshua turn into? Light. Light. In that moment on the Mount of Transfiguration. He said he... he, he, he yep. sh- what, what would be the wordage? Shined? Shown? 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 Shined? Yeah. <laughs> so was it kind of like back to the future? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. I was really hoping to get some life out of you on this one, but <laughs> yeah. Dude, well, I'm getting confused. Yeah, a that is bit. that is a pretty crazy thought, though. I, yeah. I had heard that before, but yeah, um, that was like an Aaron and Gavin set session. I know, I, I, I know, I was listening, but it was but, just it, yeah, it was yeah. kind it was okay. kind of cool. Yeah. Like, well, of, it says in verse or Matthew seventeen two, it says, and he was transformed before them and his face shone like the sun and his garments became as white as light yeah and, and, then, and also say who was with him Moshe uh, and Elijah yeah it says and and in verse 3 it says and see Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with him and it kind of tells you what time this year it was too because um, one of them asked them if it was okay for them to be there and he was like yeah and then he was like well shall we build booths for you guys Mm -hmm. well during one of the feasts uh the feast of tabernacles we build sukkahs we build booths so it would have been that time of season because why else would he want to be build a booth for them yeah you know what i mean yeah so i think that's pretty cool you you get these little hints and stuff and foreshadows of things you know like if you know the feast days you can understand what time Mm -hmm. a year everything in the in the new testament is taking place like In the book of Revelation, it talks about the the harvest, right? The angels put in their sickles because the harvest is ripe, and he reaps his harvest. Mm-hmm. The grape harvest is connected to the wine press. Mm-hmm. It's judgment, right? Yeah. So you can see when a lot of these things are going to take place in Bible prophecy just by knowing the feasts and what season and harvest they fall in. You know, there's, yeah. they're broke up in into like three sections, right? You got the... Uh, Spring feast, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits. Those are in the spring. Those are the first three. That's during the barley harvest, which you mentioned earlier. Yeah, the month of Nisan. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. That's when they would harvest all of their barley. Mm-hmm. The next feast, Shavuot or Pentecost, would be in the summertime, which is during the wheat harvest. And then the last three feasts, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles, happen in the fall, which is during the grape harvest, mm-hmm. which is symbolic of... Uh, um, judgment, judgment and, yeah. and that's kind of like a foreshadowing picture of the judgment to come his second coming and the gathering of his elect right yeah so we kind of went we kind of went down a rabbit hole there nicholas that's um, fine but circling all the way all all back to what to what we were talking about um which is passover mm-hmm. uh, one of the things that i do enjoy about passover is the liberation not only um, have we read about it in, in uh, about uh, uh, the Hebrew children coming out of Egypt, 
but also in our own lives that how, how the blood has covered us. Um, he, he saved us. He's, I mean, it, it's, it's liberating to know that we, we have a father that would do that for us. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't have much, but I, I do have some stuff and kind of like what we got in, what you guys got into, there was something cool that I did listen to and I, and I will, and I will bring it out. But like, like I said, this is, this is stuff that I've, I've heard yeah. and, and, and I, and I, I love the teaching of it. But one thing I wanted to bring out is just the, how Yeshua was involved with it from the beginning. Mm. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to get the message uh, we don't want to send the wrong message as if uh, Yeshua's not the center of our lives. You yeah. know, I mean, he, uh, Jesus is, we're, that's who we're about. You yeah, know, that, just as he is about the Father's business, we want to be connected to him as well. So um, that's, the, that's the whole reason why we study Torah, why we, we take part in the feast, is that we can be more connected to Yeshua mm -hmm. uh, Hamashiach. So, um, I mean, really what I went over, and I, and, I, and, and I think I brought it out once before, and um, what we was talking about, the Constantine, you know, in 325 AD, how he had outlawed it, mm -hmm. and basically just, he was just anti-Semitic in general. The yeah. Jews killed Jesus. We're changing it. We're changing it to uh, Easter. We're going to do what we want to do mm. basically yeah okay and then you get on into the scripture and the scripture basically what constantine was talking about and then you go to the scripture it's very contradicting to what constantine has said yeah you know so uh, in like first corinthians uh cleans out the old leaven mm -hmm. you know um, I, I can read it. It's uh, 517. It says, therefore, cleans out the old leaven so that you are a new lump as you were unleavened for also Messiah or Passover was slaughtered for us. Eight. So that let us celebrate the festival, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So in saying that, we. We want to we want Yeshua to be the center of our lives, to be the unleavened bread, the one that gets out all the old junk in our lives, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, in this, the, the way I took it, the way I took it was that uh, when you study history, you study a lot of junk. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even here in this area, in Locust Grove, in these native areas, um, <clears throat> we have uh, black friends there's a lot of diversity here that when we study history we can hear it in school but we can go outside of school and tell people that's not the true history mm -hmm. you want to hear the true history here's what really went down yeah you know so me bringing this out about easter and all that you know this is history and this is how it really went yeah, down absolutely. you know this yeah. is just, just the cold hard truth yeah it sometimes it does hurt you know to do things outside your comfort zone, but yeah. I promise you it is um, liberating. Yeah. Well, I, I, it kind of reminds me that, and, I, and, and I'm sure I'll reference this 1,700 times during, during these podcasts, but, you know, Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to be a sword. And what does a sword do? It divides. It divides uh, father against son, uh, mother against daughter, daughter. It, you know, families. Uh, friends against friends, but and I, and I think what he was referencing, you know, really trying to point home is that you know that if if he is truth, if Yeshua is truth, if 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 those if he is that, then there must be lies, right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. you know what we know about human culture is that human culture lies, and. It most always always refers back to someone wanting power. Mm -hmm. You know, someone powerful back in three twenty five yes. AD decides that well they have enough power that they can influence influence an entire world to to not celebrate something that our Christ, our Savior, you know, said that we should continue to be celebrating. Why do we celebrate? It was because it brings 
honor and glory to him. Why? Because we can set a, set aside a, a time frame in our lives that we can completely be focused on him. Yeah. And if, and if we're focused on him, then we're obviously not focused on the people in said power. Right. And so if I'm people in said power and if I can get other people to believe me instead of, instead of, you know, the real true power, which is Yeshua, then absolutely I'm going to go to that. And obviously it worked because, you know, however long ago that was, I guess 1700 years ago, it's stuck. And here we are still celebrating the same old Easter with eggs and bunnies. And yeah, most of us don't even have reverence for the, for the cross and, well, and for his resurrected body. And, a lie that's told loud enough and long enough. It's becomes truth, right? Right. Eventually, because there's going to be a people that will rise up and not study the, the history of it. It'll just become the norm, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of where we're at today. All of these traditions that we hold dear to our hearts, in some cases, are traditions. So nobody's really taking the time out to study the history side of things, too. And I, I actually got some notes on, like, the uh, establishment of Easter and the difference between Passover and Easter. So in Genesis chapter 1, Yeshua... Or, I'm sorry, Yahweh is creating, it's the creation account, right? And mm -hmm. so whenever he's doing this stuff, he's he goes on to the fourth day and he says that he created the sun, moon, and stars. And uh, he said, let these be for signs and for seasons. And these seasons, the word there for seasons is moed. Okay. And that means appointed times. And that same Hebrew word moed is found in Leviticus chapter 23 when he's laying down the feasts, the, the appointed times, right? And uh, in Leviticus 20, 23, when he's telling us these things that they're supposed to take, he's telling us when they're supposed to take place and how to observe these feasts, okay? But so y'all there's Yahweh's calendar and then there's man's calendar mm -hmm. okay and so based off the the scriptures Yahweh is creating his calendar based off the cycle of the moon mm -hmm. it's the lunar cycle yeah so each month is started by the visual side of the new moon okay. when that new moon is sighted that's when that month starts then anything that falls within that month, he gives you those days, right? So Passover, for instance, is on the 14th of Nisan. Nisan 14, or Passover, will always be on a full moon because that falls directly in the middle of that month. Mm -hmm. But in is it Exodus 12... And, and I'm sorry, but I just, I just want to ask the question, especially for me and those down listening, is that... Moon phases always go from a new moon, which is black, right? Darkness, Un invisible, invisible. Can't see it for like two to three days. Mm -hmm. It's not visible at all. All the way in, into uh, a full moon, which is uh, it, which is bright, and that's what we're saying. Uh, uh, is a new moon? No, I'm saying that's a full moon, which would be on Passover day, which is 14 days. In the, right in the middle of the month. So right. anytime we have a, a full moon, it's right in the middle of the month. On on Yahweh's month. Exactly, yeah. So that month, that uh, full moon can fall on any day really on the Gregorian calendar exactly. because they don't line up because mm -hmm. the Gregorian calendar is based off the cycle of the sun, mm -hmm. the, the, the Earth's rotation, I guess, around the sun, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of where we get our concept of a month and the concept of the years mm -hmm. and then, you know, and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the difference in Yahweh's calendar. And so whenever all of these things were taking place, this is why you can have Easter on March 20 or on, on March 31st and then Passover in April 22nd, mm -hmm. like this year. Mm -hmm. So if Yeshua is our Passover and Passover falls in April and he was crucified on Passover as our Passover. How could you have had his whole entire death, burial, and resurrection almost a whole month before the actual Passover took yep. place? And that's how we're falling this year. I think last year, I think there was a week difference. But still yet, if he died on Passover, okay, when's your birthday? 
uh, February 5th. Okay. Yeah. Is that always on a Tuesday? Dad gummit, I told Nick my birthday. <laughs> I've been holding that for years on that sucker. <laughs> what is it, February 25th? February 5th. February 5th. Hang on a second. Oh, is that? That's an inside joke. Y'all don't need to know any of any part I of know, that. I know, I know three years ago, three, no, it may have been four. It was March 24th and, uh, or uh, Easter was March 24th, and then Passover was April 24th. So it was like almost exactly uh, a month. Right. It doesn't yeah. fit the narrative, right? But, so yeah, you but got, anyway, my birthday the, is February 5th. But if, you go, if you're going off the sun, that's... Um, oh, well, man. theoretically, it could be anything, right? Well, I mean, no, no, no. I was sun. thinking of the God that the Mesopotamians worshipped. Right. Or, and like, Babylon. Yeah, 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 yeah. That they worship. That was the sun god, which would be... Right, uh, so there's actually a name for those gods. The Sumerian gods, you got like Inki, Inlu, and all of them. You get start getting into like, the, I think they're called the Anaki, you know. Yeah. And it, it, people are taking that a little bit too far into like aliens and whatnot, but I would whatever. I mean, aliens are demons. <laughs> how, how much different information do you know? <laughs> Um, Dude, it's just like, <laughs> do you have kids? <laughs> do you watch them? I just, I don't know, man. I just feel like <laughs> I kind of just let them do whatever they want. <laughs> hey, shut up in there. <laughs> no, but that's a but no, like back to the, the thing though, right? So your birthday's April 5th, right? February 5th. February 5th. Oh, okay, yeah, February yeah, 5th. No is that now. always on a Tuesday? No. So how come Easter is always on a Sunday? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's it's like, it's so, I don't know. Your birthday is always going to be on April, or I'm sorry, February fifth, yep. regardless of what day it falls. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Carry that over into this same concept. So why I I just don't understand how come people could always remember like or not question why Easter is always on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's because it's on a fixed date. Yeah. And what he was talking about well ago. In 325 A.D., Emperor Constantine, when he established Easter in place of Passover, they also decided when Easter would take place. And it was always going to be on the first Sunday, that is after the full moon, that is after the spring equinox, which is what? The cycle of the sun. Mm -hmm. You got the, the winter solstice and, this, and the equinoxes. And... Those are all based off like the rebirth and the dying of the sun, right? Mm -hmm. And then the equinoxes are the midpoint of each of those, the mm -hmm. rebirth and then the death of. Yeah. And uh, that's that's how like Christmas is determined. It's the death of the sun, but is starting to come Wait, up the Gavin, winter solstice. you're telling me Christmas is based off the sun, not off when Christ was born. That's what you're telling me right now? You're telling me that? Correct. Yes, <laughs> that's going to ruffle some feathers, it but is. it's history and it's truth. You, I mean, people it's, could literally just Google origins of anything. St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. uh, Mardi Gras, Lent, Good Friday, Easter, all of these man traditions that is on the Gregorian calendar and trace it all back to one source, a sun god or a fertility goddess, or their offspring. Yeah. Which in scripture would be like Tammuz, um, Cupid, you know. Sure, yeah. On, and, and, and so on. Yeah. But there's a structure there, you know, and these things are there intentionally mm -hmm. to, to keep us distracted from the true plan Absolutely. and work of Yahweh and to keep us, you know, in, in, in a state of division. Yeah. I feel like from the enemy because while men slept, the enemy came in and sowed tears among the wheat. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And that's what—that's one thing that I think is just so crazy. Because even um, from from my personal background, from a you know Southern Baptist, pretty dry, uh, going to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John kind of kind of background. Like even from that perspective, you know, I can ask, you know. I can I can ask you know people in, in these congregations and, and, and these in these denominations about I can I can question them about Christ's birth right and it's almost even it, you know at least locally accepted that yeah 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 Christ wasn't born on December twenty fifth like they'll even accept that or yeah yeah we know that 
Easter is not the celebration of the resurrected Christ. Why in the heck are we celebrating these things? I actually heard this week. It's uh, it was oh, it was so profound, dude. It hit me at a, in a place where I was like, oh wow, that's good. I'm gonna use it. Um, it was like a, <laughs> it was a YouTube short, and this guy was going on about modern day idolatry, really, and he was talking about Baal and how over on Wall Street there's a golden bull, right? You know, the the Bron- this, bronze bull, but right, yeah, 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 like a symbol of strength, but like. Wall Street's all about, you know, financial gain and prosperity, right? Well, it's the same demons, but new age. These spirits are still connected to these things, regardless of what we try to Christianize it as, and it feels good in our heart. At the end of the day, a rose isn't a tulip. It's still a rose, Yep. for your reference, yep. right? Yep. It's, it's, yeah, we're not physically bowing down to a, a physical bronze or golden bull on Christmas, Yep. But what's connected to these yep. things? Absolutely, it's all about. Gifts. If the root is yeah. evil, then the branch will be evil. Yeah, yeah. So we, so this is a this is a crazy good parallel because the day, or very closely up into the day that the Israelites are given the the law, right? Moses goes up on Mount Sinai. He is being instructed to write. Our, our God is writing on the tablets of stone. The, the law, or at least the Ten Commandments, while He's you know given Moses uh, the Torah that that we celebrate today. Meanwhile, that's happening. The enemy is putting in what? He's putting in a golden calf, which is the same thing that our Western culture in the United States has been worshiping at this idol from the beginning of its foundation. You know, I, 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 I am sorry to tell people out there that our nation was not founded under God. Our nation was founded under financial freedom and, and, the, and the drawing away from that. It might, may have been under the guise because we have some, some good old folks from even back to the day, but our nation was, was not founded on the Word of God because if it was, we would not be as financially uh, dependent as what we were today. Like that's why these 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 celebrations that we celebrate, as far as like Christmas is concerned, would be we would be trying at least if if not for ignorance alone, but we'd be trying to celebrate Christ instead of celebrating gifts. Because right. that's all we're doing. Yeah, that's all we're doing right now. Right. Is we're erecting trees and we're buying gifts to people, and that's all we're doing. And that's just that's just Christmas. Not to mention all the all, all the other pagan festivals that right. we, we partake in. We, 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 you know, that's why I'm asking people to wake up, yeah. wake up this Wednesday, and realize like like what what is going on. You know what I mean? Because yeah. people don't understand that when you. The way people think, like you, like both of you are, are just saying right now, um, people don't understand that the same stuff that is going on that went in into Torah, the the idol worship that 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 same stuff is still happening today, right? Because they don't want the application, they don't want the responsibility that Yeshua. When you allow Yeshua to come into your life, you have responsibilities. Right? There's less work. Yeah. There's yeah. there's less work now. In in today's society, people see Christmas and Easter as well. If I go, it's I'm all good. he sees my heart. I'm good. He sees yeah. my heart. I'm, yes. I'm show if I go to yep. Sunday, yep. if I go to Wednesday, yep. if I listen to that message, he sees my heart. But that is not the case. Good. A good. A good friend of mine. Uh, I'm not finished. Okay. I'm sorry. No. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> A good friend of mine. I'm sorry, just on that. A good friend of mine yesterday uh, was even saying, uh, you know, Easter's here, so we got to show up and show out at, at church. And man, I'm like, you're missing it. You know, my heart was immediately felt compassion for that because, like, you're missing it. You're missing the true gift of, of the true gift of love that He's trying to give you. Yeah, you're missing it. The liberation. That it, the whole time you. Just a little funny thing for me. I am huge, sorry for interrupting you, Nathan. Huge, huge movie person. But the whole time you guys were talking about the mixing, mixing in, all I could think of is Joe Dirt. <laughs> when he says, well, "What's your name?" It's Dirt Day. Don't try to church it up. It's dirt. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
that's a, that was just going through my mind the whole time. And I was like, oh. I gotta say it because I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> I'm real. That's I'm good. real happy that we were really getting involved in the Holy Spirit. Right? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. But it, at the same time, you know, that's why Dad named you Joe Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> You know, at the same time, it was going along with what I had studied. Yeah. You know, because, um, and we talked about this a little bit before beforehand, was uh, King Josiah. And I got a little bit right here I'm going to read just because I have a hard time remembering things. Um, it says, Scripture shows us the spotty record of Israel's kings and its people in the area of faithfulness. King Josiah instituted widespread religious reform and returned to the return to the true faith of the God of Israel, the sign of the national repentance. Josiah had inaugurated was none other than the celebration of what? Passover. Passover. And it says in um, Second Chronicles, it said there had been no Passover kept in Israel like that since the days of Samuel the prophet. And none of the kings of Israel had kept a Passover as King Josiah kept with the priests and the Levites, all Judah and Israel who were present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So he 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 got a hold, the Lord got a hold of him, you know, and he got a hold of the Lord. And in that he found a way, or he found that what they were doing with their Passover and with the way they were serving the Lord, they were mixing things in. And he had to bring them back to some repentance. He had to bring them back to some liberation, some deliverance. Yeah. And I thought it was really neat that that was the biggest Passover. You know, that was, that was huge because it was a time for repentance. And when you repent, and when you, like you said, you know, by the tree, when you found the Lord, that was a big moment for you. Yeah. And I've, I've had a big moment where the Lord, you know, and I, we talked about this before, but when, you know, I grew up in church all my life, but when I got to Bible college, I did not know how to pray. Mm. And my mom was like, what? You didn't know how to pray? I promise you. I didn't know how to I didn't know how to pray, you know. And I had to learn that. And yes. when I I'm not gonna go into it, but one of the first big prayers I prayed um was for for some deliverance mm. with, with somebody and the Lord answered that prayer yeah. really quick. And, you know, that was a passing over. Mm -hmm. You know, that was coming out of something. Yeah. I needed that passing over. So I just thought it was really neat that while you guys were talking about that it was just reminding me, not of just of Joe Dirt, but it was <laughs> reminding me of some of the study and the historical studying I did this week and King Josiah. And I'm going to get more into King Josiah because I, you know, there may not be a whole lot, but it's to me it's very interesting. Where can we, uh, where can we find King Josiah in, in uh, Scripture? Just reference it real quick. Uh, th in this particular part, it's Second Chronicles, okay. and I think it's Second Kings. Okay. Uh, just off the top of my head. Yep. <clears throat> yep. So Second Chronicles. Um, Does it say what age he was 35? whenever he came? To when that he north? became king, he was eight years old. Yes. And he served as king for thirty-one years. Yeah. Yeah. So he was he was a child, right? He was. Yeah. When he, he I think he, I believe, if I remember right, he's the one that found the Torah scrolls in the temple and then realized that they weren't following these. Yeah. And it took a child, yeah. a heart of a child. He says, "If you do not humble yourself as a child, we were, we're supposed to do that." Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that's what Josiah done. He humbled himself before Yahweh Elohim while reading the Torah. And he it, it, it put a desire and a hunger in him to want to do these things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're going to try to bring out as much as we can, as best as we can. Um, so I'm, I'm, we're going to dive right into it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to lead us off with a little bit. Um, basically what I have here is just trying to tie in just little things. Just little uh, um, trickets that I've seen in um, that refers Yeshua, or that it's uh, 
a correlation from the, the Torah to the Passover to the New Testament. Uh, how, they, how it comes together. Right. And, and, and something that, I, that I've seen and noticed. Yeah. So, um, and I, I'm, uh, I don't know. Uh, we're going to talk about something that, like, uh, that I heard too. As well, I love like it. me and Gavin kind of talked about it a little bit. Okay, but uh, go ahead. No, no, I love it. Yeah, I was just like, I was just gearing up, saying like I'm so oh, I'm oh, excited. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in Exodus 12, it says, "And this day shall become to you a remembrance, and and you shall celebrate it as a festival to Yahweh throughout your generations. Celebrate it as a festival, an everlasting law." So. We're coming to the Passover, or we're getting close to the Passover, and all I want to do, like I said, is I kind of want to tie something in that correlates Yeshua with this, and on the beginning, him being the Passover lamb for uh, our lives as as the lamb here in Exodus was the liberation of them coming out of Egypt. Yeah. Okay, so um, what I have here is, um, one thing is, uh, in Luke 22, Luke 22, 8 through 20. Um, it's talking about uh, the the last su- the last supper, as everybody knows it, mm-hmm. uh, collegially, and mm-hmm. and he sent uh, Peter, Peter and John. All right, some of y'all don't know, but I am reading out of a Bible that has a lot of Hebrew names in there. <laughs> <laughs> and some of these Hebrew <laughs> names I do not know, so um, I, I should probably pull out the English version of it so I do know exactly who we're talking about. That is my bad. So he sent out this. Is, I'm I'm on I'm gonna say it in Hebrew, and he sent out Kepa and Yohanan saying, "Go and prepare the pa- uh, Pesach for us to eat." And they said to him, "Where do you wish us to prepare?" And he said to them. See, as you enter into the city, a man shall meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him into the house, and he enters. And you shall, and you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, "Where's the guest room where where I might eat the pesal and my top ones?" And he sh- shall show you a large furnished upper room prepared. And go the, and go and going, they found it as he said to them, and they prepared the pesal. And when the hour had come, he sat down, and the twelve emissaries were with him. And he said to them, "With the desire, I have desired to eat this pesal with you before my suffering. For I say to you, I shall certainly not eat it, eat of it again until it is fulfilled in the reign of Elohim." Mm. And taking the cup, giving thanks, he said, "Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I shall certainly not drink of the fruit of the vine until the reign of Elohim comes." And t- so. That was the first mentioning mentioning of the cups, which Gavin's going to get into the cups mm-hmm. of of how they, what they represent and what they you know what they're going to go, how it all is going to tie together. But uh, and it says, taking the cups, give thanks. He said to them, take these, divide amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I shall certainly not drink of the fruit of the vine until the Elohim comes. And t- and taking bread, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, the cup also after service saying this cup is the renewed covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So that was the first mentioning of the uh, ceremonial meal of Passover, and which was um, what the Lord instructs us to do in uh, Exodus 12, right? Yep. yep. Okay. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is just like I said, little trickets that I found, and I'm gonna try to slow down because I'm I don't know why I'm nervous. I don't ever get nervous talking to people, but um, I'm, I am now. So what I what I what what I wanted just to just kind of bring out was um, the part of the preparing, not necessarily going in depth of preparing of the lamb, but what they didn't do. Mm. What was not done yeah. to the lamb. And so in Exodus, um, Exodus 12, 46, it says, um, and it is 
it is eaten in one house, and you are not to take any flesh. And we're talking about the lamb here. Mm-hmm. So it is eaten in one house and uh, taken any of the flesh outside the house, nor are you to break any to break any bone of it. Right? So now we go to Psalms 34, 20, and I'm going to get to a point here. Just, I, I absolutely love this, yeah. by the way, because this is expository. And it says, uh, this is the Psalms, and it says, he's, He is guarding all his bones. He is guarding all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Come on. So I'm just trying to just find some correlations to some prophecies that's being foretold in some some things, right? Connecting them. Connecting yeah. them, right? Yes, yeah. right. And this is just something simple, uh, <clears throat> just just something that, that I thought was fascinating when I was listening to these uh, other teachers bring this out. I was like, how did I not know about this? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, uh, how did how did I go so long before even Torah was wrong about? There was so much correlation from the old to the new, yeah, with what what was going on in the Exodus, you yeah. know, with the Passover part, you know, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, in saying all this, this is the part that may get some people, but I thought it was the coolest thing. There was, there was a uh, these guys were talking about uh, uh, something that they had studied. There was. Apocrypher, um, some things that they had brought out, some things that I don't necessarily study, but I, I, these are rabbis that are talking about this that I thought was just the coolest thing, and I was telling Gavin about it, that one of the first... Um, like foreshadows. Foreshadows, yeah, mm-hmm. thank you, was uh, Abraham and Isaac, when Abraham went up with Isaac uh, to uh, for him to be sacrificed as Yahweh had instructed him to do. And so that one of the things that he was told to do was or one of the things that was being done and this is the this is the talk this is the midrash that they're you know they're talking about this these are like things that they're just going over and maybe it happened maybe it didn't sure yeah it's just a cool cool yeah. thing that people have brought out so one of the things was that while he was carrying it up on uh, Mount Moriah right yeah, yeah. to Mount Moriah they said that the the wood that he was carrying was a foreshadow of Yeshua carrying the cross. cross. Okay. I'm talking about Isaac. Isaac. Yes, mm-hmm. Isaac. Mm-hmm. So when he was laid onto the altar. Which happens to be a son that is going to be sacrificed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so when uh, um, one of the other things that I thought was a cool uh, thing was that they were saying that Isaac had, when Abraham was tying Isaac down. Isaac told his father, tie me down tight so that when uh, when you throw the wood on me, I think it was, or however, I, I can't remember exactly how it was, but he told him, he said, I don't want you to break my legs. Don't break any of my bones. Mm-hmm. So that was, the, what yeah. I was telling Gavin, I was like, that was something cool that I learned, kind of like what you was talking about earlier. About yeah, the, with the transfiguration. <clears throat> tra- tra- right. yeah. yeah, and so... Um, just all these correlations with Yeshua being in the midst. That's how, so in saying all that, that's another history you can go and study. You know, you can do it on your own if you think that's cool or whatever. So um, that was just one thing that I noticed. Yeah, on that, I think it's cool what Abraham tells his son Isaac too on their way up because Isaac realizes that he doesn't have the lamb. Mm -hmm. And Abraham responds to him that, the Lord will provide the lamb. Mm-hmm. And I think that was Abraham, if you read a couple of chapters before that, he says that he saw in a distance, right? He saw the day, right? Yeshua refers to him, Abraham. He said, Abraham saw my day, mm-hmm. right? And I think you can you can read it. That's why Torah is so cool is because Torah is foreshadowing Yeshua, but Yeshua is confirming the Torah through saying that Abraham saw my day yeah. in him binding his son on Mount Moriah, yeah. you yeah. know, as that lamb. Yeah. So <clears throat> back to the breaking of the legs, or the not breaking of the legs. Ooh. There you go. 
It said, therefore, uh, John, uh, John 19, 31. It says, therefore, since it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the stake on the Sabbath, for that the Sabbath was a high one. The Yehudim asked Pilate to have their legs broken and they be taken away. Therefore, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was impelled with him. But when they came to Yeshua and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. So the whole time we're going through uh, this Passover and the way the Lord instructed us to do it. Um, at the end of the day, the lamb was still the same. Mm. No legs broken, but still was a, a foreshadow back in Exodus of the blood of the lamb, the salvation, right? Mm -hmm. And then when Yeshua hung on the cross, it's the same. It's the foreshadow, or it's that was all the foreshadowing led to him mm -hmm. being on the cross, the blood saving us, you know, washing away. Or how much, how what am I trying to say? Yeah, you know, what I'm trying to say, yeah, well, yeah, say it then. Uh, keep reading. Wow, okay, <laughs> but um, well, I mean, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with the spear, and suddenly blood and water came out, and he who has seen his witness and his witness is true and he knows that he is speaking the truth in order that you might believe for this took place in one order for the scripture to be filled not one of his bones shall be broken and again yeah, right another there. script <clears throat> and, and and again another scripture says they shall look on him who they have pierced yeah so what you were getting at is that not one of his bones shall be broken and that that the New Testament is confirming everything that you've been pointing out right. in the in in the Exodus about how this lamb was going to stay pure because in in Exodus chapter twelve it talks about how this lamb was supposed to be a perfect one yes all the way up until even death itself. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, we do have more. We we got more that we're going to go over, and um, I'm going to let Gavin lead. I'm going to let Gavin take away. Um, he's got about 230 pages worth of notes on Passover, and he's going to run through it in about 30 minutes or less. So get your ears ready, get your notes, get your pen, get your lead, fill it up, get you a cup of coffee, wake up. <laughs> Off to you, guys. Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for that, bud. <laughs> So back in Exodus chapter 12, when he was talking about the, the Pesach, the Passover, in verse 3, it talks about, it says, Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this new moon, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Okay, on the tenth day, talks about you're supposed to bring this lamb into your house. Then on in verse five it says, "Let the lamb be a perfect, a perfect one, a year old male. Take it from the sheep or from the goats, and it shall be kept, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this same month, new moon. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel." shall say it between the evenings between the evenings okay so if you go over to john chapter 12 now i might this is going to get a little a little deep but if i have the right words it should make sense okay john chapter 12 Accordingly, Yeshua, six days before the Passover, the Pesach, came to Beth Anna and what does your translation say? Bethany. Bethany, where Eliezer was, who had died, whom he had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha served while Eliezer 
was one of those who sat at the table with him. So this is six days before the Passover. Passover is on the 14th day. What is six days before that? Eight. Okay, so this is Nisan 8. Mm -hmm. mm. And it says that he came to Bethany on the eighth day. Would this be New Year's Day? No, no, no. This would be Nisan 8. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. You're good. That would be circumcision day if you was oh. Jewish. Oh, yeah. On the eighth day. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but um, it's it says that they prepared a supper for him. So what is interesting to me is that a supper, supper is mainly usually your last meal of the day, mm -hmm. right? It's dinner, okay? So this is the closing of one day into the next day. If we understand how Yahweh has created a day, we see it in the book of Genesis. In creation, when he created a day, it talks about there was evening and there was morning the first day. Mm -hmm. So he establishes then in the very beginning on when a day starts. Mm -hmm. It starts in the evening. So six days before Passover, he went into Bethany and he was eating supper at evening. Right? Because mm -hmm. that's when you would eat supper. Mm -hmm. So then that would be the closing of Nisan 8. The start of Nisan 9. Mm -hmm. Okay? On verse 12 of chapter 12, it says, On the next day, which would be the next morning, which mm -hmm. would be Nisan 9. On the next day, a great crowd who had come to the festival when they heard that Yeshua was coming to Jerusalem took the branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and were crying out. So this, this whenever he's leaving from the research that I had done from Bethany to uh, Jerusalem was about a day's journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when he would have got up early morning of Nisan 9 and traveled to Jerusalem, he would have entered into Jerusalem in the evening of the ninth day. Nisan 9. So that means he's entering on the next day into Jerusalem where he's riding on a donkey that had never been ridden, right? On the colt. Yep. It says they took palm branches or trees and went out to meet him and were crying out, Hoshiana, Hoshiana, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So you have in Exodus chapter 12, the per, a, a, a perfect male lamb chosen on the 10th day mm. of Nisan coming into the house and then here you have Yeshua the lamb for all mankind coming into the house of God or Jerusalem on the 10th, on the 10th day of Nisan four days later would be the Passover and he's delivered up into Pilate right and he's crucified about the third hour so I that that I just thought that was pretty interesting about how literally all the way down to the the smallest detail of everything Yeshua is bringing the mm -hmm. the full revelation of him being that Passover lamb yeah right and and then uh, it goes on to talk about well before, let's see this is um, says in Exodus 12 that this lamb had to be a perfect lamb well how do you how do you uh, determine if this lamb is perfect you have to literally examine this lamb mm -hmm. from head to toe, from nose to tail. Every detail about this lamb can't have not one spot or blemish whatsoever. It had to be a perfect lamb, right? And then it comes into the household. Yeah. Well, during these four days after this, after Yeshua is coming into the lamb, it talks about, you can read on later into this, this like chapter, uh, chapter 13. Well, it talks about how all of the scribes and Pharisees and everybody came and was was trying him, right? On his, it says, on the account of this crowd also met him because they heard that he had done great signs. The Pharisees then said among themselves, "You see how you are getting nowhere at all. Look, the world has gone after him." And there was a, oh, excuse me, were certain Greeks among those coming up to worship at the festival. These then came to Philip, who was from. Uh, Beth Zeta is what mine translation right, says. Right, of Galilee, and were asking him, saying, Master, we wish to see Yeshua. Philip came and told Andri Andrew, and it, in turn, Andrew and Philip told Yeshua. 
And Yeshua answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be esteemed or glorified. glorified. Right? Mm -hmm. So later on in these, he he's being tested by the scribes and Pharisees, right? They're trying to find to see if there's any fault in him. They're literally examining his every move, his every thought. You know, they I think this is actually when um they ask him which one of the what is the greatest commandment, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And he goes on to tell them that the greatest commandment is to Shema Yisrael Eloheinu Adonai Echad, right? Shema Israel, the Shema. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Right. So he he's quoting Deuteronomy mm -hmm. there. I yep. think it what is four verse six or six verse four or something like that. But he's telling them that the greatest commandment is to Lord love. Love the Lord thy God, and then the second is like unto it. Yeah, that was just kind of that was that was really neat how we we just use uh, the Word of God to explain the Word of God, and how we can point out an exact timeline because Yahweh is literally just that good and that perfect that it's it's easy to it's easy it's so easy to to follow it's so easy to to trust because of the fact that He doesn't make the mistake, right? He yep. didn't. He didn't make the mistake. He everything was appointed for his time and his perfect, uh, for his perfect time. Um, in fifteen, in John fifteen, uh, twenty five, it says, "But that the word might be filled, which was written in their Torah, they hated me without a cause. They couldn't find no fault." And we, you know, you go to the resurrection or the crucifixion story. You find where Pilate couldn't find no fault. Yeah. And uh, nor um, I just had his name in my head. Uh, Herod. Mm -hmm. They couldn't find no fault. You know. Yeah. And. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's that just that goes with what you know the yeah. perfect the per you, they couldn't find any cause. And it says that they hated me without a cause. You know that's what Torah says. You know he was quoting Torah. Yeah, I just think it's I think it's so cool that what Gavin brought to kind of our attention that, you know, in order for a a lamb to be discovered to be blemishless, to be with you know, without without any kind of imperfection is to examine it, is to study it. And, you know, they they examined him and like you were saying in, in verse twenty five of, of, of John fifteen that uh, but they hated him anyway. They examined him, found him perfect, but denied him anyway. Yep. Yeah, they did everything they could, you know, yeah. to make him uh, with blemish physically. Yeah. You know, on the outside, the appearance was uh, torn apart. It was just ridiculous what they did to him, but still yet I mean it just wasn't you're dealing with the man that comes from the inside not the outside yeah you know and they had that mindset that your works was more important than your relationship mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that's they, they, they just still didn't get it at, even at that time even then. that's yeah. why they couldn't find a fault like everything this dude did every, well, not dude but everything that Yeshua did um, it was right yeah yeah it was right standing so and it, you know, verse twenty-two says, "If I had not come and spoken to him, spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin." Mm -hmm. And that's that's what they were trying to get rid of. Was he was exposing some things? Yeah. And he was getting rid of their excuses. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. And he was showing them the, the blemishes. And yeah. Were, and we we have blemishes. So. You know. So, am I understanding correctly that Yeshua came for his own, correct? He came for his own people, um, primarily, if I'm correct. He came <clears throat> for the Hebrew people um, to ex maybe expose some of the traditions that they were, um, that, they, that they had made themselves God, if that makes sense. They had made, they had put themselves before even the Torah that they supposedly, quote-unquote, was studying, right? And so 
Jesus comes on the scene, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but Jesus comes on the scene to expose them because of their mistakes and specifically that particular people, right? Because of the fact that they were worshiping him in a wrong way. And it, obviously it came to fruition at a, at a perfect time that he was like, you know, I'm your Passover lamb. And, you know, more or less they were the ones that end up did the, the slaying of that Passover lamb. But it's almost kind of prophetic in a way. Yeah. Because so, they were told back in Exodus to uh, to study this lamb to make sure he was without blemish, but then to, to sacrifice him. So it, it kind of all goes back to what I said last week about them being so caught up in the outward appearance and the actual physical um, aspects of these these things right and the the self-righteousness and had they been doing what they had Yahweh intended them to be doing the whole time Yeshua tells them that they missed their time of their visitation Mm -hmm. had they been doing what they had been told and taught to do through the Torah the whole time they wouldn't have missed their time of their visitation I feel like that's kind of where we're at right now in the world uh, as far as like the understanding of scripture and like people aren't discerning their time you know he gets onto them and tells them that you can go outside and look at the clouds i'm paraphrasing here mm-hmm. but you can tell by the clouds if we're going to have fair weather or not mm-hmm. you're, you're not discerning the time of your visitation and people aren't doing that now right that we're seeing all these signs and wonders take place. We're seeing, I mean, we just had a solar eclipse. We're seeing earthquakes. Iran's invading and attacking Israel. We had Hamas attack Israel. You have Russia and Ukraine. You have all these signs that are taking place that he lays out in order in Matthew yeah. chapter 24. Yeah. And people are not seeing it. And I'll also remind people that the river Euphrates is drying up as we speak. They're all looking for, like, the Antichrist. They're all looking for the mark of the beast. Based off their theology, why are they looking for all of these things if they're not going to be here for it? Yeah. Talking about (laughs) the rapture Mm -hmm. and the timing of that. Yeah. But, okay, so back in... um, in Luke chapter 22, it talks about when he's sitting down, it's the Last Supper, and, you know, he read it well ago, um, sending his disciples out to go and prepare the Passover meal, the Pesach. And then it talks about Yeshua's actually talking in verse 15. Uh, let's back up to 13. And going, they found it as he had said to them, and they prepared the Pesach. Verse 14, And when the hour had come, so this is between the evenings, this is the start of Passover, because the evening starts on the, or a day starts at the evening time. Mm -hmm. He sat down, and the twelve emissaries or disciples with him. And he said to them, With desire, I have desire to eat this Pesach with you before my suffering. For I say to you, I shall certainly not eat of it again until it is filled in the reign of Elohim. And taking the cup, giving thanks, he blessed it. It's not, there's actual uh, blessing of cups that takes place right he said take this and divide it among yourselves for i say to you i shall certainly not drink of the fruit of the vine until the reign of elohim comes so this first cup that is mentioned here it's not really the first cup in the order of the sequence Mm -hmm. this cup would actually be the third cup okay which i will go in the orders of the cup so the four cups of passover are an integral part of the passover celebration They stand for each of the four promises that Yahweh makes to his people in Exodus chapter 6. Does someone want to turn to Exodus chapter 6 real quick? Chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you 
from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. Verse 7, I will take you to be my people, I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has brought you out of the out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So the first cup of the the Seder is called the cup of sanctification. This promise that is related to this cup is the cup or the promise that he says when I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So the second cup here, the cup of deliverance or judgment, right, is the second cup. And the promise that's related to the second cup is when Yahweh says, I will rescue you from their bondage. And this third cup, which is the third cup, which is the one right here in, in Luke chapter 22, and when he says, when taking the cup, giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. This would be the cup of redemption. Mm. It's the third cup. And the promise that's related to this cup is that I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Okay. And then back in Luke, it talks about <clears throat> um, in verse 19, and taking bread, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20, likewise, the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the renewed covenant in my body, which is shed for you. So this cup was, is the cup that they would have drank in the Passover Seder. It's the fourth and final cup, the cup that is drank after the Seder. It talks about the cup. This is the cup of praise. And the promise that is related to this cup is, I will take you as my people, and I will be your Elohim. So that's kind of the connection there that people don't really understand that these cups were cups, I think I had mentioned this before, in, in these that were in the order, right? In mm -hmm. the in a in the Passover Seder sequence, right? Yeah. So it it just takes a, a a little bit of studying and understanding of a Passover Seder to mm -hmm. kind of connect and make these dots. Yeah. Right. And once mm -hmm. it's understood, it's just like everything will start making sense and it will just kind of like domino effect. So to kind of plug uh, Sukkot Kaim again, once again, um, this is something that Sukkot Kaim will actually partake in. They will actually partake in these, these four cups. Am I, am I correct? Yes. We, we, we will actually be doing the whole uh, um, Passover on online or uh, live. We'll be live streaming mm -hmm. on YouTube and Facebook. So, Anybody can join. Anybody can um, come in. We have uh, Pastor Brian will be going over, and we also have a uh, an, an Israeli who is um, has is admirable and respected. Uh, I think he just he's almost ninety years old, and he's still he's still running strong and doing everything with that. And he'll be going over it with Brian as well. Yeah. You know, more more probably more of a traditional way on his end, mm -hmm. which is which is neat and cool, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. um, Brian's going to bring it out uh, more of a I think Brian uh, in my opinion maybe Nick and Gavin can um, agree with me that he simplifies things down to like you're a first grader <laughs> i mean he does i mean he will break it down as best as he can and as good as the time frame so yeah. we will be doing that yeah i just i do want to say something about you know yeshua being the sacrificial lamb um because one thing that i i really have been looking into um and not just for the podcast or anything, but in my own personal study time has been um, the crucifixion, mm -hmm. the betrayal, the crucifixion, or the arrest, uh, the crucifixion. And one thing that I've really been looking into is the, um, the beating he took. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like watching boxing. I like watching... MMA, 
Uh, and sometimes you see some of them people after a, one of their fights, and they're you're like, yeah, you know, how did they go through that? How did they fight like that? You know, but um, I think it was in Isaiah uh, fifty two fourteen. Uh, his appearance was so disfigured mm-hmm. beyond that of any man, and his form marred beyond, beyond human likeness. And if we think about that for a second, that you couldn't even recognize him. Not, not, not him just because of who he was, but him as a human, you know? Mm-hmm. And one thing I do appreciate about the movie Passion of the Christ is that it gives you not necessarily the full the full amount of abuse that he went through, but it gives you kind of a a sugar coated de- uh, depth of what he kind of went through, you know, because you see you see, in the movie you see there's skin, you know, and there's flesh missing. His ribs are exposed. You're watching him getting punched and spit on, and he did this for us, you know. And I, I'm not a parent, um, but I can imagine that Gavin, you would go through that for your children, and Aaron, you would mm-hmm. go that go that far for your child. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for Yeshua to do this. For someone like me, you know, for someone that has purposely ran from him, purposely denied him, and to still show me compassion and and forgiveness, it's it's beyond what I could even ask for or imagine, you know? Mm -hmm. So... I, I I want people I'm not saying you have to study this or anything but for me let me just put it this way I'm not a very big guy Nate's a bigger guy you know and people when we pull wire at work who do they call they call Nate they call the bigger guys they call the big strong guys And I'm not trying to swell Nate's head or nothing, but Nate's been there for me. Nate's been there for me in some situations, but Nate has also seen some of the things that I've done, you know, and he's taken up for me, you know. He doesn't know everything, but he knows that I haven't always been right. But Nate will defend me whether I'm right or wrong. You know, that's just a bond that him and I have. But Yeshua was doing that, not just for those at that time. He was doing it for everybody. Mm-hmm. He was doing it for all mankind. And, you know, the giving of his life was the ultimate sacrifice and the ultimate deliverance. And I'm thankful for what he's done. I'm thankful for the Passover He's provided for us, you know, that that, he, that Yahweh set apart and that Yeshua was willing to be a part of, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so thankful and I'm so um, grateful for that. So as we get ready for Passover, it's celebratory. Yeah. It's, it's a time of joy. It's a time of, you know, and for me that was, that's what stuck with me the most in studying for this was I had to look at that stuff. You know, I mean, I had to get myself to a certain spot, you know, and I, I want to be fun and, and happy all the time, you know, like we, you know, like we usually are here. And, but for me, that was something that has really just, just stuck with me, you know, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful for, um, his sacrifice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Isaiah 53, 
verse 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our crookedness. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. We all, like sheep, went astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way, and Yahweh has laid on him the crookedness of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, but he did not open his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the she its shearers is silent. Is silent, but he did not open his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And as for his generation, who considered that he shall be cut off from the land of the living? For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. It's during this time of season that we proclaim his death. You know, Paul tells us, I think, in 1 Corinthians. 15, no, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter five. 11. Oh. That we proclaim his death during this time, right? When we do the Passover Seder, or the, do the Passover, partake in it. He says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 through 26. It's time that we can look back at our own lives and see the redemption that he brought us from, you know. Yeah, it, it is. It is a joyous time because that's what the the whole Passover is all about. Mm -hmm. Evaluating ourselves and then where we've came from and where he's brought us from and where we're heading. You know, I was uh, I was telling Nick over the over this week that it <laughs> it blows my mind that four hundred something people were interested in what we had to say. That we are, that we're, that we're blessed beyond anything that we can do. That 400 people would take interest in, in his word. And uh, whether we grow more than five views and five subscribers, I'm completely satisfied. Like, uh, it, it just, it, it blows my mind that the four of us have the opportunity from where we were to where we are now. To be able to talk about the Word of God for three hours, two hours, whatever it is, on a recording on a Sunday, and we get to do that every week, and that's just, uh, that's, it just blows my mind yeah. at how cool the opportunity is that we can do that. So, Other than Shabbat, it's the highlight of my week, you know? Mm -hmm. And then wrestling, you got wrestling on Monday? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it is the highlight, man. I mean, Shabbat, and then the next day you get to come in and... We get mm -hmm. to do this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if we don't have anything else that we need to we need to go into, um, do we want to close it out, or is there, is there some more stuff that we need to get into? I'm I'm sure there's a ton more, but I think that uh, um, you, you was talking about Sukkot Khan doing the Passover. I think we was going to try to do something as well, was we not? The four of us? Uh, d during that time of Passover? Yeah. 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 So, we'll, I, yeah, we'll, we'll have. So, I think what we planned on doing. Oh, as a channel. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 I oh, think. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And this isn't set in stone or anything, but I think um, for Passover, we're going to have the four of us, maybe not all seated at the same spot, but we're going to have a little spot of our own where. People are going to come and share, um, share their thoughts, share their feelings on Passover and mm -hmm. how they're enjoying it, you know, here at Sukkot Khan, um, because we definitely enjoy doing it. Um, so I think that's something we can look forward to. Yeah. I, I'm definitely looking forward yeah. to seeing people interact with, uh, the channel. I forgot his name, uh, Aaron. With you, yeah. You know, just because Aaron is so, he's. You know, we got a lot of friends coming. Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah. and by the yeah. way, this episode will air the week of Passover, yeah. too, by the way. Yeah. So you guys down lens will be able to see this and be able to come to Sukkot Khan. So. Yep. For that Saturday. Yeah. So. Yep. So. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun, you know. Oh, we're yeah, gonna be, it's going to be a blast. It's gonna, we're going to be laughing. We're going to be joking, and we'll get to talk with the – We'll get to talk with the Pattersons from Houston. You know, we'll get to talk with uh, our buddy Sam. Um, our Joplin family. Our Joplin family. Um, mm -hmm. Well, man. We got a lot of people. We got a lot of people yeah. we're going to be able to talk to. We got you know? a family coming that is exciting, too. I got yeah. people from work coming. Some yeah. of my close close friends from high school. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be great. Some yeah. of them, it's gonna yeah. be their very first time oh, participating yeah. in, in a seder. You yeah. know, yeah, this will so. be my first time participating in a seder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I said, you know, well, uh, me and my immediate family, we celebrate Passover with the lamb and the bitter herb. But yeah, right. Yeah, we, that's what we do at my so, house. So, like, one thing that's cool, especially this podcast, like whether anybody else watches this or down lens, like whether they learn a the thing, I'm I'm being fed. I'm right. learning, yeah, and yeah. that's amazing. So am I. Yeah, yeah, me it's too. amazing. That's, I mean, we. If if there's anybody that's listening right now, find you a Gavin and a Brian. Yeah, <laughs> find people that because I mean, not everybody's going to understand it. Yeah, you know, not everybody's yeah. going to yeah. grasp all that knowledge. Yeah. and it, when when people, everybody needs a Gavin and a Brian that right. yeah. yeah around you yeah. that can yeah. make it simple for you. Yeah, and you know. Because when you read it by yourself, you're kind of like, man, what's yeah. going on? We're so man? thankful. We're so thankful for Gavin. We'll just yeah. 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 And he shakes his head, but it's a gift it that's is. been imparted to him. Yeah. He he's got a gift that I wish I had. You know, I'm not Listen, saying those downlines. He tells us to do this. All right. He says, y'all yeah. better give me applause every yeah. episode. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you hear you hear the thing where uh, it's called the gift of gab. Yeah. Well, we got the gift of Gav. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> okay, so um, let's wrap it up. Um, yeah. Uh, who wants to pray? We'll, we'll wrap it up. I can pray. It don't matter. Do it. All right. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time and this opportunity to learn about you, to, to push your word, Lord, to edify anybody that's listening. Um, we thank you. We can't thank you enough for the opportunity. Um, we pray for everybody that uh, that we've come in contact with through our social media. That uh, if there's any needs, you know, they be met. If um, we pray that we, as a group, here at uh, Wake Up Wednesday, that we can do your work the best that we can for you. And we thank you. We love you. In Yeshua's holy name. Amen. 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 Go home. Go home. Go home. Read, Read your, your Bibles. Bibles. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>